behind it. Beautification is uh, some picture of you. Picture of you buying the beautification. I was going to say, let's don't look at Mark for an example. What's the matter with you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Uh, There's beautification. Robin, will you begin talking about this for me, please? Well, this whole year, I've been, uh, last year, 17, 18, I feel like we just barely been keeping up. Without Fruit. Thinking too much about improvements, but um, I, in your books, I kind of just broke out what our historical cuttings on, you know, when I say beautification, I'm thinking of mowing the right of ways, being the shrews, I-75, um, and I just kind of broke down what we historically have been doing in case you had in your mind that you wanted to increase that practice, because really the only way to make it better is to do more often. And I really think that um, sometimes I kind of try to stay out of trouble with Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Spending too much money. Yeah. Um, and we, I also had taught last week the bear about some chemicals to see just to get a price on what it would, so I could present it to the county manager about maybe we could spray and, you know, like a, keep the grass down, not grow so fast. And the reason I contacted Bayer is I was told that if you use Bayer and they make your mixture for you and you spray it and it doesn't work, they come in and retreat everything with no cost to you. Is that Bayer like like Monsanto. They they bought Monsanto. And um, so I just kind of gave you the historical <coughs> cuttings on the runway, and then we also just from being here last year talking about a doctor road and KLBV, I kind of put a summary of that on the bottom of the activity since we were here the last time. Um. So that let, let's touch on that just a minute. And, and this, I mean, everybody kind of knows where, what my position is about the roads. Uh, if, if under KLDB, you've only had one cleanup where you've gone and picked up debris. Well, that's what we've had any involvement with KLDB, that they've requested our assistance. Right. Um, and I think a lot of their focus is on private property cleanup more mm -hmm. so than right away. Mm -hmm. um, so, and some of this, of course, were it was from their cleanups. They just, a lot of times they go clean up and they want us to come by. And does, the, does the contractor or Lamb County, prior to mowing, do we do a pickup prior to the mowing? Yes, sir, we do. On the roads? We do the right away mowing, and we have been trying to get our weekend pickup from Chris, you know, community right. service. I don't know, I've talked to Felicia a couple of times about the community service activity being way down um, and that we needed to get it going. Um, so we've been struggling with that. Okay. I remember in previous discussions about that particular mm -hmm. issue, there was always a problem as much as anything with um, been a little bit of an issue. The vehicle for transportation has also been an issue. You can't force them to do it, but that is a way for them to take care of their community service requirements. Under so probation. basically what we know from going to court, in state court, is that if they sentence them to community service, they give them a list of approved community service opportunities, um, and then the people pick off that list. Um, what we have been working to clean up is that we have people who are not as honest as they should be on the, the signing off side of things. So if the judge says you have 80 hours of community service, there's businesses that for whatever reason will give people two double hours or whatever. And so because Robin does such a fantastic job following the judge's order, they don't always want to come pick trash up because... There, it's going to be hour for hour, and they've got mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. I like to add, you know, uh, in public works at the city of Bottle, so we did get the judge to approve two for one mm -hmm. uh, for helping us with the recycling effort because uh, they got a pile like a mountain. My long story short, for the last uh, year and a half.
got two years, I got the uh, judge to tell okay in writing, two, two for one. So uh, last couple of weeks, it's been really packed with community service, but I think it's partly because they also have some new new uh, mm -hmm. person that's over too. Well, so, so, um, I mean, but they have to do it in a week. That's, that's what we're getting at. And they're getting two for one hours. Is that fair money or less money? Those are well, it's misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. That, that's 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 state court. and municipal court basically. Well, the, the seems like the um, state probation mm -hmm. just has shut down, and I called them, you know, to reach out to say, you know, I hadn't seen anybody. <coughs> and then they were told, somebody told them we weren't doing that anymore. So I don't know how that happened, but I thought I had cleared it up, but so far it's not picking up. So. Joe that works there when he comes through to pull the sheets, I remind him, can you, you know, bring that up in y'all staff meeting or I mean I'm not over there in, in the compound no more, but I know that the arrangement that I made about two years ago, uh, and everything and they were just been on everybody's on the same page and they put it in writing that they're getting two for one. And, and just now they're starting right. to really see the fruits of it, um, for the most part. And I don't know if it's, you know, cold or they don't want to get out on the road. We don't have any community service, not for any other areas either. Based on the number of people we have going through revocation hearings, I don't think anybody's doing their community service <laughs> period because they're all going back to jail. We'll look at the numbers tomorrow, but there's about $23,000 in fines that were converted from July 1 to December 31st of 2018 through community service hours. That's one thing to remember. That if you see someone with high numbers of community service, it's because the judge has reduced their fines significantly. And, 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 I don't, and I don't know exactly what has happened recently, but something really has happened recently because we have a lot of, I'm talking about, about 20 or 30 that they're coming, uh, I see them in, in, the, in the vans and all over to the compound, and I know they probably like to be over there because it's secluded, their friends don't see them walking the street or picking up paper and all this old, that's on the pile, but that pile is... It's massive, and it's mm -hmm. got the rats. It's got everything in it. So, but they're they're, they're doing that. Just uh, from my observation. That's kind of where I wanted to come back to, though, and <laughs> get a little bit more input. Right now, our mowing contractors they are not required to do pickup prior to mowing. Yes, they do. They so do. they do pick up before they. <clears throat> right. If they if the okay. grass gets high, they don't. It's it's just a given. You're gonna run over grass. Sure. And usually, if he runs over. Paper, and we get a call. Now, as soon as I call him, he'll have them back trapped and okay. pick it up. Okay. So but it does yeah. happen periodically. Yeah. If the grass is high, it's hard to get that trash yeah. about oh. it and fill. And the grass gets high because of less cuttings, and the grass gets high like when we do a half cut because it's so wet they can't get down into the ditch. Well, um, the the half cut, what the half cut was originally designed for is the school kids. Like, you know, it takes you six weeks to make a full round. Well, if it's raining a lot and the grass is growing really fast and we start getting a lot of complaints about snakes and my kids got to wait on the bus, we'll run through in like two weeks, two and a half, and make that half cut, at least it gets them out of the high grass, snaky areas. This spring you, you're talking about, it does work. That's what we've been doing for a while uh, and everything. It, 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 I forgot what, it sucks to grow. It says a grass retard. We've done it twice. We've had two different experiments with different chemicals. And I would say it might have saved us a few blades. It might have, you know, gave us a little faster cut on it, but it never saved us a round. And I was after something <coughs> aggressive, you know, and um, so that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> well, we so had all the dirt in the road because we were eroding everywhere. We had uh, one one year, which was about ten or twelve years ago. We were spraying Roundup around the signs and the driveways. Well, that whole winter we repaired driveway washouts because our weeds were our erosion control, right. and we killed them. And then we ended up making up for it in the winter. So we stopped with Roundup completely, any kind of chemical that like that. I think, I think the first round that they sprayed with was something to kill the weeds, and the other one was to help with the actual real grass, good grass, and which thickened it up and choked everything else out. And then, of course, you come through with the 
not the uh, not the bush hog, but you have a finer type of uh, blade to cut with. And well, I think that's what she was yeah. saying about working with Bayer. They'll do a custom yeah. mixture for you mm -hmm. to address mm -hmm. that type of thing. Right. Yeah. Rather than us trying to be chemical experts, you know. They don't, they don't send you concentrate and you mix it. Mm -hmm. Is that way it goes? I mean, you're not buying water. No, we said concentrate and we mix it. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like that. The concentrate's a special thing. Yeah. And then they design it for you, what blends together, and what the your right of ways, and what kind of equipment you have. How to do it all this. So I was going to, I was actually working on that so I could show the kind of. <laughs> you know, how, is, how is your, is your program? that we approve each year for the Department of Corrections. Uh, if we can utilize them on tail ditches, bridge embankments, and those sort of things. Are you getting enough um, enough uh, usage out of them to be able to keep the bridge back embankments and, and the tail ditches and all for them? Well, um, we utilize the prisoners for the majority of the time. We have two groups and we use them for the easements, tail ditches, and all that. We have a preventative bridge cutting that we usually use with our labor crew because we're trying to stay ahead of DOT so when they come through and inspect us, everything's, you know, approved and we check the bridges while we're there. So it's usually our crew that does a lot of bridges. But it's, um, for a while there, we were down a little bit on population for the crews, but the way I was saying it is, well, we're only paying for one, so if we get one, we're breaking even, you know, and uh, so as long as we have three, we're okay, but now they have a GED program that was going on through the prison, so you had to let them go in early to get their GED training at uh, school, and then you had your other crew, you had a half a day on some of them some days, so... I learned, I learned from you about the pizzas and what you give them for lunch and we incentivize them to come uh, because we, we, we did the, uh, the same type of deal, but they didn't, if you have cold cuts, they, they generally don't come, but you go to get those $5 pizzas <laughs> and, and, and everybody shows up, I mean, I mean you can do a $5 KFC snack box. Cigarettes were <clears throat> really one you know, of those. <laughs> 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 But I was just thinking, if we could just get a good cutting where it looked good and then worry about flowers and plants later, let's just get control of the trash and the grass. And so we've been, yeah, yeah um, we've been actually using a contractor and what we call half cuttings is six foot off of each side of the off ramp up over the bridge would be the trash and edging, weed eating. And we've been doing that monthly, sometimes twice monthly during the heavy seasons. And DOT was, we were supposed to do the full cuttings. And we got a contract with DOT to do those cuttings. But somehow every time Lovins, their contractor, comes down the interstate, he just hits it all. And, I'm, and I've called him twice. Don't call him. Yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> so I said, I, I've done my honest part. Good. But they, the guy told me, don't worry about it. If the communication on our end is that bad, just don't worry about it. Talk to them about the mowers you yep. and I mm -hmm. definitely discussed. Um, we actually demoed a remote control mower. And um, it, it actually will cut more distance than you really want it to, because you can cut more than you can see F further distance. and. Um, the cost of the mower, I believe we could pay for it for one year of what we're paying a contractor. They put one of our employees on the off-ramps mowing mm -hmm. 
<coughs> the point is for it to so slope. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do the slopes and you don't have the don't safety work. concerns you do That's when you got an individual. We demoed the one where to see if it would ride the slopes and mm -hmm. And you can raise it up and drive over ops, you know, like if it was a big rock, you can go over it and then come, you know, send somebody to pick it up. And you've got you've got those mowers in your wish list. <laughs> <laughs> Did, quick question: Did we uh, agree uh, with GDOT for the zero scape on on 75? I know some were, um, I guess, under under the assumption that they wanted to save certain trees along that route or whatever. Did we just go with taking it everything away? Uh, well, I I didn't have any involvement in the selection of what come down or me everything. I mean, to me, it's not. I was I was wondering because I, I I know. Uh, they had some out of the city as well. So I think they say KLBB was there and they say uh, the Tree Commission, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't I know. I think we were invited, but I don't think our input was what we were invited for. It was more invited <laughs> for information to give us what, of what they were doing. But I, they went through a mark. I think they did a fantastic job. You know, I was like, wow. And Georgia Power was actually their contractor on a lot of our work right away, and I was just amazed. And uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more go, but I think it's going to help us, you know, once we start mowing. And Why did they do that? I was just curious. I was assuming that they did it because all the liability from storms and the trees That's were getting large think. enough, they were actually starting to fall in the right so they're, away. They're trying to move them back so they don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. It's like clearance like it's not really yeah. even if it's off the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because down the Lakeland Highway, they really pushed it back when you first get on there. And they, the trees were getting tall enough. I think I heard two calls there in Irma where a tree would have, or one of the storms had fell on the interstate. The top of it was on the interstate. Now, before I, that. I do this a lot, I, I, and I don't mean to be negative with it, but the state of Florida does a fantastic job with just that sort of stuff, but they are looking at it because just about every road in Florida is a, is a hurricane evacuation yeah. route. Yeah. So yeah. they look at it from that standpoint. If you've got a storm coming and a tree goes down, they don't want it to get in the road. So they do a real good job of cutting all that all the, that undergrowth even and, and the trees and cutting those back far enough away from the right of way that you eliminate those problems. Just yeah. never mind the potholes. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I sorry. Had, just never mind the yeah. potholes. Yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. actually, me and Mike had talked to... Um, George Power, and they are their forestry division about contracting out if nothing but one road a year to go down that road and just get it all off. That would be one less road that you've got to deal with for vegetation. Well, even but it was ridiculous. <laughs> even, even when your guys are cutting it, cutting it on, on 75, if you maintain it, and trees you have to go around. And everything else when it comes to maintaining that stuff. And well, we won't things. ever maintain the straightaway that I know of. That will still be under DOT. The only thing that we'll maintain is the off ramp itself. Off ramp itself. Are and you then, uh, doing anything on county roads, like my road? Trees are encroaching limbs. I'm not trimming those back. Are we talking about this or are you talking about well, any of it really. We have, I mean, we go around cutting our legal height that we have to cut it off the road is 14 feet. Um, if it's from the edge. Is that from the edge of the road or are you going in the right of way? In the right of way up, yeah. And then, so we, we keep those, you know, yeah. if it, any kind of reports that come into us like semis or campers or buses, we try to get all that. And keep that cut back. Lot Laurel has a lot of that down towards Grassy Pond, you know, oh, before you get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, what my hopes were is we'd get that remote control mower and we would start mowing off ramps versus our contractor because I feel like we can get them more off then. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, instead of being on a rotation of a once a month, and we have heavy litter on 16 or 18, we can go hit that twice, and uh, you know, just kind of use a little bit of you know, be flexible with it. And then I feel like that it's really hard to judge this year what the summer's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But if this summer looks like last summer, I 
Yeah. Well, if it's anything yeah. like this past fall and winter, there's going to be plenty of moisture for that grass to grow. Plenty of moisture somewhere. in the ground right now that's going to get it off to a good start. Yeah. Well, um, the forestry called last week, and we went out and looked at this grass, Congo grass. Kogon grass. Kogon grass, yes. I got pictures. I was going to fix the flyer up and hang it up at work. And this a, a grass that came here from Asia that they found in two or three locations that they're trying to treat so that we met them out there so that if we run across it while we're running on the right-of-ways, we can contact them. And identify it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to ever done anything with some people. I mean, we see when we work on the right-of-ways and we disturb the grass, we reseed it when we leave it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a blend. Right. I've the, seen a centipede that it's deep, maybe that high. But, you know, you need more. You know, that's, our, that's the only reason why the hay does so good because you need but the everywhere we've ever ever saw it, every centipede or anything like that, yeah. it never works because it dies out and it dies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Commissioner? That's my question. Oh, beautification. <clears throat> How can we be doing? I, I don't, honestly, I don't think we need to spend the money on every year. That's my thing. We, um, at, last year we were here, so I actually tracked the number of requests we have on the doctor roads. Like, so far in 418, we only had two roads that actually got, that we know of, got picked up, and they requested us to pick the bags up. And um, we loaned our, our truck to them, you know, trailer, dump trailer, when they do cleanups, and if they have large amounts or furniture or anything like that, we'll go by and pick up their stuff from their cleanups as long as it's on the right And then we're finding the disposal when we pick it up. Yeah, how many times did you request that? Uh, once in 17 and once in 18. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask a question, and, and it may be something that you've got to do the research on to get an answer. If, if you put together a crew that basically was just addressing the beautification and that's trash and litter pickup, um, as well as some of the light mowing duties, uh, such as medians and those sort of things that we do have. Uh, what kind of budget number would you be looking at? Uh, mm -hmm. into that at all? Well, I actually had done um, a power a couple of years ago on that for, you know, if we had a what I call the trash crew. That would cut subdivision entrances, oh, yeah, we zero turns, yeah. some of that mm -hmm. spatial that, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking like two people mm -hmm. with a trailer and a couple of and we didn't do it. Yeah. I would like control Right. I'll use the example of the of the portion of uh, Oak Lightwell Road where we've got a median mm -hmm. and we have some shrubs and trees and such planted there, the trimming of those and the weeding and around them and the mowing doing that on a more regular basis, uh, and again, you know, the exits, that type thing, and that may be something that that role can play there. What are you looking at? Do you recall, I mean, just a, just a guess? I would think maybe 60. 60? So it's been okay. Yeah. And that's what I'm getting at. I mean, maybe would we be better, would we be better off allocating the funding that we're using at KLBB for a, a much better um, um, beautification program in the county than what we're currently getting out of KLBB. Now, KLBB does a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. Their river cleanup, all of those things are huge. So they still exist. And they and they exist basically with just one employee and then a ton of volunteers. But as evidence has shown, they can't get to all the needs that I feel like that we really need to address in the county. Just like you're talking about, they got these adopted road programs. People are paying a fee, if I understand it right, to get their name on an adopted road, but they're not doing anything. And then if we get one pickup 
a year on a couple of roads, we really hadn't addressed litter here in Lambs County. So I'm interested in seeing if Public Works could develop a, a plan, and we've already done some work on that, to see what that is and whether we would be better off as, from a county standpoint, to move into our own county uh, litter and beautification, if you want to just kind of roll that all into one, let KLBB continue to do the things that they do well and do it through their volunteer program, but we could take funding that we're using KLBB for the assumption that as we have under SDS for litter, and let's really address litter in Lowndes County. Somebody asked me about that recently, that if we had a program where somebody had a refrigerator or stove or sofa or something that they've got, not something just thrown out in the woods, if we could go by and pick that up. We don't have that. And I don't if think they could call and like make a appointment, whatever, we dispatch that boom truck or whatever. <laughs> you have that now, man. You have that <laughs> trash. Yeah. Pardon me? Well, say advanced will do that. If you call them with a refrigerator, big item, they'll come in if you call. So we're deep south. They're supposed to. They'll come to the rest of them. They're supposed to. And I know just from a personal experience, I've had extra trash that wouldn't fit my hand, and I called ahead of time, and they said just put it out there, and they got out picked it up. You know, they said they would do that if you call ahead of time. Okay. I'd like, I would like to kind of see if you can fine tune okay. that estimate and give us an idea about what we can do. I mean, we're in the budgeting process now as we move forward, and be, that's a number I think that we need to see. I think the board is aware that um, we have started code enforcement as a standalone office. Mm -hmm. Correct. And uh, we're working on writing those requirements on code enforcement uh, for the adoption by the board and giving some teeth where it's necessary, um, but that, I think, by giving them their own identity is improving that process mm -hmm. in, in cool. conjunction mm -hmm. with what Bobby was talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah because I feel like a lot of the efforts where KFEB's been doing a lot of work is on those neighborhood cleanups where really they shouldn't, by code, they shouldn't be like, allowed to be like that anyway. Yeah. The, code, the code enforcement should already have taken care of those yeah. issues. Right. I would agree. I would agree yeah. With that. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And keep in mind the fundings out of the landfill fund, KLBB, solid waste host fees. Mm -hmm. So you're not talking about increasing your general fund budget in any way. Okay. So, you know, and you've got a lot of money in there that, quite frankly, only can go to exactly what you're talking about. Gotcha. Okay. <coughs> it would, what I think would look good if we could put money in that. Um, I tried to do a big metal sign that says welcome to Lane County, but something really like that. You know, it would be nice. Something pretty. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the right people steal those signs. They must look pretty good. <laughs> the one in Eccles welcome County always has bullet holes. <laughs> <laughs> Deer crossing signs. The newspaper called me not too long ago, wanting to go out where we had a deer crossing sign to get a photograph for a story that they were doing. So I called Robin to find out where there might be one, and she said we basically quit putting them out because every time we do, they've been stolen. So she went back through the work order to find out the last place that we had put one up, which had only been like two months ago. I sent the reporter out there and said it may or may not be there, and he called me back and said, nope, it's gone. The only problem with that, the the only problem with that is the deer that yeah. can't read the sign that they cross somewhere else. <laughs> 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 it's in the same place across the thing. I've had a flower bed around the Lambs County sign. And I put some knockout roses and low maintenance stuff, and uh, two days later it was gone. It's my sister. It's We've got sense. concrete pillar signs <laughs> up at Chuckalug Road because people stole the Chuckalug sign. Yeah. So yeah, I know so. Yeah. I was wondering why that's that sign why. was that way. Yeah. That's why. 
Yeah. Well, After a hundred signs of chuckle loads. Chuckle loads. <laughs> Everybody's got one. Yeah. Everybody wants a chuckle load sign. Or Sadie Paul's line. Maybe you should start solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hey, Paul, you can steal it. All right, any other questions for Robin? Thank you, Robin. I know that it's been raining a lot. We've been working really hard to keep any complaints down and keep everybody driving smoothly. My road's, <laughs> per my road's perfect. <laughs> well, Robin, let me tell you. Yeah. That, uh, we do get that, but we understand. And I'm very quick to tell them the great job that you and your staff does as far as keeping these roads open and doing the great work that you do. So I'm very appreciative of it because I've told these commissioners all the time the one, number one complaint we get as a commissioner typically is roads, and you do a great job on minimizing those complaints. We know that if, when we get weather like we've gotten, those problems are going to arise. But we want to we want to let you know that we're going to try whatever, however, whatever we can do to try to help you do a better job there and make it easier for you to do those jobs. So again, thank you for all you do. Take care of yourself and wear your seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only ones that drive in a bad way. <laughs> this, uh, this department is uh, using some of the worst equipment. No doubt. They work in some of the worst conditions. They never complain. They never bitch. They never cry. They ask what we need. And most of the time when Robin calls, there's some already on their way to the shop or to the, to the um, office because they know what is left up for them to do and they are ready to get it done. Never complain. And I don't know how we get so lucky with our application selection. I know, I've seen some of them. We, we <laughs> We do so well, and then I run across other things, you know, times I see, and I'm like, well, that y'all didn't have many applications, but we always seem like find good people, and everybody works good together, and you know, most of them don't complain, or if they do, we're just so not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we appreciate yeah, you. Okay. We know that yeah. a great department runs because of the management that that department has. Yeah. So we lose to the department. Well, we try. Yeah. We try. You can be humble and not take any credit for it. Yeah. Well, right, it's, it's, it's a It's about job. 4 o'clock. Y'all about ready to call it quits for the evening. Mm -hmm. I think we've got okay. these. Who's coming in shortly? Most to adjourn. We don't need to adjourn. Just leave. Yeah, well...